I am Richard Huddy. Uh, I manage the engineering team that works with uh, games developers. Um, I work from the UK normally, so I'm a little jet lagged at the moment. So I was very pleased to hear Nigel say that we'll be going horizontal. Because um, at this time of day, it's four o'clock in the morning or something ridiculous like that. So the more horizontal I can get, the happier I am. Um, we're focused very much on enablement. Yeah? The essential principle that drives us is how can we take a current game that's in development and make that better? Yeah? Not just make it use our technology in a useless kind of way, but how do we make it genuinely better? How do we make the experience better for anyone who plays that game? Now, one of the questions that, uh, that comes up a lot is, how big is your team? That's not really the right kind of question you should be asking. If you want to ask the question, you should be saying, how effective is your team? How much can you do with your team? Can you do more than the competition? Why? What kind of stuff can you do? Um, and because we swim with the current, and you've seen, um, you know, I, I asked Chris to state out loud, Chris Kingsley, this is um, roughly how many days he spent on getting iFinity support in. Um, Chris Taylor said the same kind of thing. Yeah, these are under a week of investment. The engineering effort to get iFinity support in is relatively small. That's important to us, yeah? And we do that by making sure the tools are right, by making sure the APIs are right, by giving the support, giving the information early. Everything that you need should be there so that you don't need a massive team, you need a productive team. <clears throat> so uh, the team that we have uh, speaks nine different languages. We all speak English, which is handy for the team meetings. Um, and we're, uh, we're supporting developers in over 30 countries. It was fairly straightforward for me to find a, a list of 30 countries that we support all over the world. We're effective and impactful. Great team. Tremendous pleasure for me to lead that. Right at the moment, half past five, they're, half past five, five o'clock, they're, uh, they're out at GDC teaching about uh, DirectX right now. So we're, we're holding lectures on tessellation, on direct compute, all this kind of information, just putting it out there for games developers. Um, and as far as possible, always done through open standards and industry standards. Uh, very much the, uh, the right way to go with this kind of stuff. So the first thing we do when we get to a games developer is ask ourselves whether we have the opportunity to make the game better for a game player. It's not about locking in our technology ever. It's always improving the game. <clears throat> That's typically by finding efficiencies. That's the way of making the, the game run faster. Um, DirectX 10.1 is better than 10.0. DirectX 11 is better than 10.1. And when I say better, I don't just mean it's got a higher number, so you should be excited about it because it's got a bigger number. It's genuinely better, yeah? It makes a difference. If you use these APIs, you can do things more efficiently. So we're always looking for efficiencies, always looking for ways to make games uh, use the hardware more effectively to give a better experience. And certainly, we look at the cutting edge features and we say, OK, now that we've got them in the API, how do we get them into games in a way that improves the game? We're looking at things like tessellation. This has been a really, really big issue for my team over the last year, <clears throat> where we will look at this stuff before any of the games developers have adopted the, the coding techniques. And we will say, OK, this is the most effective way. We'll experiment with lots and lots of techniques. Um, if you look in the Microsoft SDK, there are many samples on tessellation there, which we've contributed to Microsoft. Do we put them just on our website? Do we just promote them you know, privately to developers? Absolutely not. Just push it out there. Put the information out there. Put out the white papers. Put out the information. Make it easy. <clears throat> and we educate developers. We almost never go into a developer and say, look, I'll write the code for you and then walk away. Because a black box like that is something that will break sooner or later. So we're always there trying to educate games developers and help them to be more productive not just with this game, but with the next game. Yeah? You teach a man to fish, he's, he's not hungry. Yeah? Give him fish for the day, tomorrow you have the same problem again. <clears throat> so education is fundamental to the way we run this kind of group. Um, and we provide tools and hardware at critical inflection points. So the DX11 transition, which we've uh, just been through, um, if, you, if you mentally step back to the DX10 transition and compare the two, the really obvious thing you'll see is the DX10, it took, what, five months? for the first DX10 game to arrive? Quite astonishing. In the first month, well, in fact, by, by day zero <coughs> for the launch of DX11, there were two games there. And we've already got half a dozen games out there in the marketplace right now, which you can take advantage of, you can play. Very, very rapid transition. And we've done that by providing the tools and the hardware at these inflection points. <coughs> now, the tools, that's how do you use DX11. That's looking at the samples, that kind of stuff. We've also been out there aggressively seeding but we really want to enable games developers in this process, yeah? People like Chris Kingsley, um, who I talked about, Aliens versus Predator going DX11, 
almost spot on a year ago. We gave them hardware within a month or two of the meeting. <coughs> lots and lots of push to, to help them along the way, um, trying at every stage to keep the timetable that Rebellion and Sega had set for themselves undisturbed, yeah? We will not slow the delivery of this game down unless there's a really good reason for it, yeah? It has to deliver a lot of extra value. Um, so we never wanted to interrupt the schedule, and uh, that's, that's very much the way we work. We talk here about open standards and industry standards. We love open standards. We love industry standards. We're trying to make it easy for people to get their job done. This is about a horizontal, yeah, a, an ecosystem approach, a horizontal approach, which is enabling, not disabling. If I find my staff disabling, yeah, then that'll be a black mark against them on the review. It's as simple as that, yeah? And we talk about this all the time. Do we want to hold people back? No.